Okay, hello everybody, Hirsch here. Welcome back to another video. And as you may have noticed, we have a bunch of computer parts on this table, because in this video, we're gonna build a computer with Nick, and hopefully you can learn a little bit as to how to build a computer. So let's get started. Okay, to start off for our motherboard, we're going to be using the ASUS Z87 Deluxe Edition. Our power supply is a 625 watt Cooler Master power supply. Next is the processor. We're using the Intel Core i7-4770K. This is one of Intel's new Haswell processors running on socket 1150. If you don't buy the same parts that we do, you need to make sure that the socket on your processor and the socket on your motherboard match up. We have a Samsung disk drive. For our graphics card, we have an MSI Radeon 7950. Now this is a three gigabyte edition. The only thing you have to make sure is that your power supply is gonna be able to support the graphics card that you buy. We have a Corsair 120 gig boot SSD. We're going to use a custom cooling solution, which is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo CPU cooler. Eight gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM and Windows 7 Professional. And finally, this is the Cooler Master case that was selected to house all of these parts. When you buy your case, you want to make sure that it's going to be large enough to accommodate everything you buy, especially your CPU cooler and your graphics card. Now we've gathered all our parts and we're ready to start building. The first thing you want to do is take out your motherboard and place it on top of the box that it came inside. Basically, you just want to place it on something where it's not in danger of getting an electrostatic shock. Now you're ready to unbox your CPU. This can be kind of tricky, so be patient and be careful because this is an expensive part and you want to make sure you don't damage it or touch any of the metal surfaces at all. Your CPU should come in a little plastic case. You want to remove this and then put it in the slot in the motherboard. Now your CPU will only fit in one way, so there's really no way to make a mistake. You just want to make sure that all the pins are facing downwards towards the pin on the motherboard. So you just open up the hatch and then you can insert the CPU very easily. Once that's in, we're going to want to install the CPU cooler. Now your cooler is going to have a back plate. And this can be kind of tricky to install, so it's helpful to have two people. But what you need to do is you need to screw this into the back and then put the other part on top. You should have some little screws that look like this. You want to put these in from the top so that you can screw the back plate into it. This is possibly one of the most difficult parts of building a computer because what you need to do is screw the back plate onto the back. If you try to turn the whole motherboard over, all of the screws fall out. So you have to kind of insert the back plate and then screw it in. It's very difficult and it usually requires two people. So I recommend finding a friend or someone who can help you put this on. So once you finally get the back plate on, what you want to do is secure it to the other side. You should have this little tool so that you can use a screwdriver to help you secure all of these nuts and bolts. Make sure that when you tighten everything, you're making it secure enough that it's not going to fall off, but also not so tight that it's going to damage or break anything else. You need to check to see if your cooler already has pre-applied thermal paste or not. If it doesn't, you want to just apply a little bit, about the size of a pea. In order to install the cooler, you want to take the spider-like contraption and attach it to the CPU cooler. Basically, this will ensure contact between the top of your CPU and the bottom of the CPU cooling block. Now this whole thing can be screwed on top of your CPU, onto the motherboard, where you've put the pins before. Once you've done this, everything should be nice and secure and you should be able to turn the motherboard in any orientation without anything wiggling or feeling loose at all. The fan can now be reattached by pushing it onto the main radiator. Now you're ready to insert the RAM. 
One thing to note is that if you're only using two sticks of RAM, it's recommended that you either put them in the two gold slots or the two black slots. Usually you don't want to put them in one black and one gold. Because we're using only two sticks of RAM, we're going to put them in the two gold slots. Once you finish that, it's time to put the risers into the case. This is to make sure that the bottom of the motherboard doesn't make any contact with the metal in the case. All you have to do is just screw these in with a little tool that should be provided. In order to put the power supply in the case, we need to remove this little housing. Not all cases are going to have this, so you need to just figure out where your power supply has to go and see if there's anything obstructing it. There should be a hole in the back of your case at either the top or the bottom where the power supply should go. It will also have screw holes so that you can screw it in. Finally, you're ready to put your motherboard with all the components on it inside your case. Make sure to lay it carefully on top of the pin so that the screw holes line up. And also make sure to align the rear I.O. ports with the I.O. shield on the back. You should have provided screws that allow you to attach the motherboard to all of the risers that are inside your case. Things look pretty good, and now we're ready to install the graphics card. Now, most graphics cards are going to actually screw into the back of the case, so you need to remove these rear panels here so that it can screw in where those were. Now, you want to make sure you remove the ones that are in front of the PCIe slot that you're going to use. Because I didn't know which two I was going to use, I just removed the three that were approximately in the right area, and then I knew that I could just put one back on later. You need to carefully remove the graphics card from its anti-static bag. It should have little rubber protectors on each of the components, so you want to remove these before putting it inside your computer. Now you want to open the PCIe slot that you selected and carefully insert it inside. Make sure to align the ports on the graphics card such that they're going out of the slot that you removed. Remember, you do need to screw in the graphics card. Now we're ready to start wiring up everything. You need to check to see how much power your graphics card requires. This specific card requires one 6-pin and one 8-pin connector. So make sure that you find those on your power supply and then route them to your graphics card. Depending on your motherboard, you're going to have different power requirements and different power connectors. But one that's pretty standard is this giant cable that you have to plug in. I think it's 32 pin. So make sure that you plug this into your motherboard because it's going to provide all of the main power. Once you've plugged everything into your motherboard, you can turn your case upwards so that it's easier to work with. Now that everything is upright, it's going to be much easier to install any storage drives. Every case is different, but in this case, you simply pull out the drive bay, and then you can insert your drive. There are different bays depending on whether you want to insert a 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive. After you put the drive back into the case, you can go around to the back panel, which should be removable, and then it's very simple to plug in the power and then SATA cables. Again, depending on the case that you've purchased, installation of the optical drive may vary, but in this case it's very simple to put it in. Finally, you just need to hook up the front USB, power, reset, and audio. This can be a little bit different depending on what type of motherboard you have, so make sure to look at your instructions to figure out how to do it. Hi guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope you learned a little bit about building a computer. Maybe you even built your own, and if you did, you might want to install operating systems and drivers and stuff. If you want to learn how to do that in a second part of this series, leave a comment below and I'll make part 2 about operating systems and software and stuff. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button because that really helps me out, 
If you really want to help me, please share this video with your friends, because that's the greatest thing you can do. And also, if you want to see more content as I produce it, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.